In OI4, we are presented with a lot of focus trees. Some of them amazing, some of them not so amazing, and some of them are downright poo. Terrible. I really don't like them. Why did they make this focus tree? Why did they make this focus tree? I'm not a big fan of turkey, guys. All right, we're going to go through the current iterations of focus trees. Please note the date of this video, because in future there will be new focus trees. So be aware, focus trees may get changed and rejiggered and updated in future. Should we start with the major powers, shall we? So if you want the most mediocre focus tree possible, I think we're going to look at Germany. Germany has been remade from the original focus tree. It used to be just 70 day focuses, one by one by one. But then it was extended, adding a massive monarchist opposed Hitler path. So most of this stuff on the right was not on the original focus tree. I think one of the issues with the German focus tree is one, it doesn't take advantage of the balance of power, which is the new mechanics, which is a nation that would really take advantage of it too, having the army versus the SS and the balance of power system built in with that. I feel like that's coming. You'll see it soon. Plus two, there aren't really many options if you do kind of go historical. You're basically doing Hitler's path. And some of the alt history stuff is just kind of like eh, baked in there, like befriend Denmark, the Netherlands all just based on pushing ideologies and not really any events or interactions or decisions. The German focus path is the most mediocre. It's the most middle. It's not terrible. It's just okay. Germany, the very first one will be dead in the center, a C tier. Next up, let's pop over the Atlantic, the United States. I personally think the United States focus path is either historical with little lack of flavor or do a, a historical path that will always inevitably lead to a civil war. Alternatively, you've got quite a complex focus if you go for America first, but I feel like the way the civil wars work are just a little bit annoying. And I feel like the, I don't like it when you have a civil war and you just kind of have a lack of control before you enter that civil war and everything just feels kind of random and then you have the kind of focuses about honoring the confederacy which is a really cool alt history path um however I, the last time i tried it it just didn't work right it, it was confusing because the honor of the Confe confederacy decisions only work when you were at war i don't know maybe they're fixed since then i think a, a smart focus tree will give interesting decisions and interesting events the different combination of certain things to happen with usa you end up going fascist or communist and the rest of the world kind of just ignores you. It doesn't really make much difference. For the most part, it just falls a little bit flat when it comes down to a lot of the flavor. So it is going to be a D tier for me. The United Kingdom. Now, I, I personally have a so soft spot for the United Kingdom. I think for the most part, the historical path for the UK is probably a 9 out of 10. It's really good. But once again, it's got another issue that most focus trees have. Pick the historical path or civil war. I guess it is a bit of a compensation that you can do it without the civil war by using the political power for black shirts or political power for trade unions and then you force into a really stupid railroad decision where you're forced into decolonizing which i really hate that i don't like that at all there should be a, like a decision system or like a focus at the very bottom if you speed run to the bottom that you should be able to avoid that but the fact that you're forced into being a communist path that has to decolonize is so 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 annoying i feel it's slightly above average once again maybe i've got a soft spot for the uk maybe i live there but overall, I just based upon some of the decisions you can make, I think there are some better options out there overall. France. I've got another soft spot for France. I like the fact that the nation's a mess to begin with, and you have to constantly pick up the pieces. And every one of these focuses feel like they do make a meaningful impact on your nation, and you're always working towards something. For the most part, as France, you're always working towards fixing your country, so you always have to push southwards to fix that specific issue. I like it when you have a goal from a focus tree to fix something. It just feels rewarding, that other than just grinding national focuses. And I, I like the fact that you've got lots of flavor with Spanish intervention as well. I like that as well, because it just adds a little bit of, even even though you're democratic, you get the option to declare war on Spain, which is really cool. I also like that the factory bonuses for France are a bit different too. Like if you try and go for invest as many areas possible, that when you go for local colonial industry, you gain big of a bonus. So it has like a runway effect where you can build up over time, speed and speed and speed. And then when you take off, you gain more and more factories. I like that a lot too. The old history paths for France are amazing. They are really, 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 really good. The monarchist paths are all good. And the fact that there's three of them, okay, there's not a lot of options down here, but the fact that you can unite with the Spanish throne, you have the Goncalves and the Carlos have won. That gives you a really cool goal to work towards to get the Carlos to win. That's really cool. Uh, Proclaim the Third Empire is so cool to remake 
Napoleon. And the, some of the options here are really cool. Just they gave you straight war goals. They don't mess about. There's not this build up, focus, 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 focus. It's just like, give me a war, war goal focus. Let's start some wars. That's cool because the game's all about war at the end of the day anyway. To be fair, I'm leaning towards S tier, but I'm going to hold off just for the time being. France, you are an A tier. A new focus tree that has only just been released. A brand new boyo, the Italy focus tree. But you know what? It gives me echoes of the French focus tree. Your country has issues. You want to fix those issues. And you want to sort out your Ethiopian war situation. The fact that you end, end up at war and so early on. And you've got to kind of deal with the issues of leading around. Uh, pissing off the League of Nations and East Africa is so cool. You got so many options to build the nation really big as well. I will say some of the focuses around Mussolini and working down the middle of the focus path tend to be a little bit grindy before it gets some of the sweet stuff, such as uh, towards a greater Italy or for Mare Nostrum. The alt history focus trees are just so much flavor. You've got two alternative fascist paths. You've got the monarchist path where you can go with an absolute monarchy. And then you've got your special Pope path as well. Oh, the Pope path is here. I thought this was a hidden path. No, it's down here. There's a hidden Pope path that appears here, isn't it? I mean, there's so much flavor. To be fair, I was a little bit intimidated when I first loaded this, this focus tree up. And I kind of at first didn't, or didn't really gel to it too well. But the more I played it, the more I've gotten used to it, the more that I've explored all the paths. This is the ultimate focus tree that should be in every... Hearts of Iron 4 game. Really, really good. I don't know why I'm not making these bigger. Let's make them bigger. Japan! Uh, the historical path is, is pretty decent for the most part. It's kind of really frustrating that you're forced into having penalties attacking into China. It feels like a really strange thing to lead towards in a focus tree. I'm going to work down the focus path until I incur penalties. Feels really unrewarding for progression of as a nation. Don't get me wrong, I don't understand for balancing perspective why it's in there. But it just feels kind of strange because a focus tree should feel a bit like progression and improving your nation as a whole. And it just feels kind of strange you work towards penalties. The other focus paths, the old history ones, are absolutely crap. <laughs> They're just so bad. The unthinkable option. Uh, I mean, I, I like the fact it's called that because it, it does reference the fact that how unbelievably bad it is but i suppose where do you go from there this focus path is so short uh, and then it also causes all your puppet nations to break away from you which is just mad annoying as well the democratic path is an absolute joke i suppose the problem with japan or america these big major powers that made a big monumental impact on the war is that other nations need to change ideologies if you change ideologies on historical i feel like if japan goes democratic it feels like maybe China should go fascist, for instance, create a balance of power. Otherwise, it just leads to the Axis or the Allies or the Comintern becoming particularly too strong. And then you've got the kind of absolute monarchy path as well, which just basically instead of going to war with China, you go to war against the Soviet Union, but it doesn't really lead anywhere. And then you've got a bunch of focus on the right, which are basically the old style focuses. Oh, and then you've also got puppet development focuses that gain you really nothing. Honestly, Japan's focus path is great if you play historical, but I think everything else is just poo. It's just not very good. And for the most part, I'm going to give that a D tier. Okay, China. Oh, China, China, China. Once again, another nation where everything's falling apart and you've got to pick up the pieces. And it feels very rewarding as China to unify China under whatever said ideology you want to go down. And for the most part, some of the bonuses you get and the options you get are really cool as well. It also gets some insane bonuses to reducing consumer goods as well, which you can't really complain about because it really gives you a way of building a modern Chinese nation. This part of the focus tree, though, is absolutely terrible. I detest this so much. So the idea is you work with the Western powers to potentially develop your nation and westernize it. That's kind of the idea behind it. But all these focuses that require set opinion goals are just frustrating. You should be able to boost the relations initially and then go for the initial mission to France or the or British corporation. But then after that, you don't have to keep boosting relations. Like All these require high relations. I just think that's a really annoying mechanic. And I don't like the fact how unbelievably linear it is. It's just from top to bomb, top to bomb. I guess we've got a few choices to begin with, but then it's top to bomb. Eh, uh, I'm mixed about China because I feel like the nation is in a really good position to build a really good powerhouse. And I feel like the issue is that you just don't have the right tools and the right good options to be able to build a cool modern China. But for the most part, I'm so mixed about China. I don't like how it's linear focus tree. Another nation that's recently had a new focus tree. Oh, 
Hey, hey, hey. I'm not sure how I feel about the Soviet Union. I really don't like the purge mechanics. It feels like people die randomly. You don't have a lot of control over it. And whatever path you go for, you end up in a civil war. Yeah, sure, that's historical. I get that part. It's kind of annoying that you're forced into a situation where you've got to go into a civil war if you go down an old history path. The monarchy's paths are kind of interesting too because the these ones romanov restoration as well as pan slavic nationalism is kind of cool too a lot of the issues with the nation can't be fixed as well unless you actually go to war with a major power as well which also kind of simultaneously slows you down i get it historically uh internally soviet union had a lot of issues with that it's, it's strange because you'd think the soviet path would be the most interesting but for the most part it just feels kind of strange to me and also the five-year plan is really weird as well i feel like what happens is some of these focuses do too much i feel like you hover over them and it's like Ugh, blob of text blob of text it's just maybe sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming i also really don't like a lot of these ones too because these ones are, are themed around the soviet union invading you i've never done these focuses before like the road to life move stuff to the euros a lot of these end up being overly expensive and not really worth my while i really don't feel very uh positive about the soviet path i'm not a big fan of it all to be fair even though it's one of the new focuses and you probably think it'd be one of the best for the most part i actually really am not a fan of it all once again, I'm leaning towards a D tier with this one as well. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that focus. Next up, we've got Poland. So we're not quite a major power, but close to one. The Polish focus tree is amazing. Usually, the historical path tends to be the most interesting. But because you end up with the inevitable, that you end up getting capitulated to Germany. I suppose this is the path that I've done the least. Some of the four-year plan bonuses here are really good. This is probably one of the best. The National Defense Fund, reducing your consumer goods by 15% for, for three years. It's amazing. It's a really cool way of boosting the economy but not giving them a permanent reduction to consumer goods it's like a kickstart to your economy the highlight of the focus tree for poland is this path assemble the regions of council this is the highlight and you've got one two three four five five monarchist path and they're all really cool and they're all really op poland the monarchist path is the only path they really should go down anyway i think they've done a really good job with poland I don't know. I guess I'm kind of mixed. I kind of like the monarchist path and I really like the potential that you've got with it. However, I do feel like the historical paths are a little bit confusing somehow. Anyway, we're going to go with a B tier. So I do think there's too many focus trees for me in the game for me to go through. So I'm going to go through some of the low lights and the highlights. So let's start with the low lights. Uh, Turkey is horrendously bad. Now, the big reason why Turkey sucks so much, I love Turkey, by the way, the country, not the focus tree, is it's linear. You basically start from the top and you've got to kind of work your way down. Uh, without having many actual choices and decisions. And I just don't like it when you've got this option to basically, it's all revolving around Ataturk, which probably makes sense because he was a big figure at the time. And then going from there down the focus tree, eh, this is probably my absolute most hated focus tree. And even when you want to go for the, the most interesting path, which is the restore the Ottomans path, you've got to jump through loads of hoops to actually get there, which is just not fun. And then you've got this focus path on the right, the Balkans one, that's just a dead end. It's just about making a faction without any really substantial, very good bonuses. And then you end of the focus path. You get the option for the restore the Turan Empire, which I'll admit is cool, but it basically is kind of a world conquest. <sighs> From a flavor perspective, I do like it. And then you have to deal with the Turks, uh, you have to deal with the Kurds as well rising up, which I think is cool. But for the most part, if there was a focus tree, that I would rate the lowest, it is going to be, unfortunately, Turkey. Now, I love you, Turks. I hear you in the comment section. You're going to be ass mad about this. But unfortunately, PDX has done a disservice towards your country because I don't think this focus tree is very good. I'm going to give Turkey a big fat F. Next up, Ethiopia. This is a fairly new one as well. Uh, your nation is basically falling apart in every single way. It's basically an undeveloped tribal style economy and everything it's basically the mechanics of it are nothing like any other country in the game and they tried to recreate this with all these negative national spirits personally hand on heart ethiopia is pretty good i think with the mechanics and being a revolving around the war and how unbelievably difficult it is to hold out against uh the italians i think pdx has done an absolutely amazing job you might not even be aware of this but if you go down rally around the emperor and then board the train and then go into exile, there's actually three mini, mini focus trees that are not visible here, depending on what nations you end up going into exile with. With some of them particularly very, very strong, giving you capital ships. That's right. Capital ship Ethiopia. It's a thing, apparently. It's a thing. Uh, these bonuses are fantastic too, with specific bonuses in different terrain types, which is really great based around your war effort, which is really cool. 
I will say that the downside to this focus path is that the development areas of the country are a bit shit. I feel like some of the 35 day focuses, I feel like most of them should be 35 day focuses. The reason why I think that is because you're going to be focusing on the war effort and defending. So you tend to come to these last and by, by the time you come to this, you've already defeated the Italians. It's kind of already 1940 and you kind of need to speed run to actually build a proper developed industry. You've got to come some good flavor at the very bottom as well. So uh, Haile Selassie taking the full power and the King of Kings. And then you've got some interesting options for colonial resistance. Ethiopia is very, 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 very good. However, because sometimes the mechanics are a little bit weird, particularly around causing rebellions and the late game, which is forming the African Union and some of the other late game mechanics, which kind of fall short, I'm going to give it an A tier. Bulgaria. Now, I hated Bulgaria to begin with. Uh, however, the more I've played it, the more I've actually fallen in love with it. Um, it's another one of those ones that's annoying because it's got like these inbuilt mechanics and decisions it's within the decision window where you've got to kind of balance out party politics of the army taking control, which I always think is a little bit frustrating because it's not very hard to visualize. It's just you load up the decisions tab and it's like an Excel spreadsheet of just different numbers and different ideologies, which is kind of annoying. However, the ability for Bulgaria to start out as a nation that's backwards, struggling with its economy, its military, but then turn it around really quickly by going down some of these focus paths is so unbelievably cool. And some options, the bottom like for instance, the Balkan Confederation, the unification of the Balkans, even went down the democratic path, which allows you to unify the Balkans as well, which is really surprising. And as well, some of the cool options down here, like the third Bulgarian empire, all these focuses are so unbelievably cool. For the most part though, Bulgaria started out as one of the most annoying focus trees for me, but it actually started to become one of my natural number one favorites. I actually really like the Bulgarian focus tree. I'm going to give that one a B tier. All right, next one, Canada. Uh, it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. They recently updated it here by adding a bunch of focuses. If you go down the blue shirts, which allows you to take Labrador, Newfoundland, a bit of land that has one civilian factory. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. A bit like most of the Together for Victory focus trees. They're usually short and you constantly railroaded behind world tension, war support, being a dominion and just limits the how you can play the game honestly hand on heart i, I think the canadian focus sheet is is pretty bad you're already a minor nation as it is you're already locked behind your focus tree you're already a puppet of britain the fact that they add more options to slow you down is just mad annoying it's probably the best of the worst <laughs> i'm gonna give it an e tier canada is pretty bad czechoslovakia so <laughs> I love Death or Dishonor, but the Czechoslovakian uh, focus tree is just probably one of the worst proper focus trees in the game. It's kind of like a generic focus tree, just with a little bit of flavor, just a tiny little sprinkling of flavor. Everything's really simple. It's like forts, 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 factories, 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 democratic for fascists or whatever. It's just, everything's just very generic. It's, it's basically a glorified custom focus tree. I feel like I don't want to give it an F tier, but it's an F tier. Our next one, Greece. Yeah, Greece. Another focus is from Battle for the Bosporus that I wasn't a big fan of, but I've learned to love as well. It's amazing. Byzantium is an option. You've got the option to form like a Greater Greece as well. The formable nations are always cool. It's a really good reward that, by the way, formable nations. And also a lot of the options to pay off debt, build your economy as Greece feels really rewarding as well. For the most part, Greece is actually a really fun nation. Once again, I'm kind of basing this on funsies. I'm also basing this on kind of like game mechanics as well. It's definitely worth it. I think definitely it's an A tier for Greece. Greece is really, really good. You go. Death or Dishonor. You basically got two options. You either go with Tito or you go Western Focuses, which opens up lots of different options. Either siding with the Germans or trying to make concessions to the Allies, which is a really cool what's kind of part of the theme of death or dishonor do you go for death or dishonor i will say the industry path is a little bit one-dimensional everything else is pretty sweet too I, I really like yugoslavia i think one of the advantages of yugoslavia is just in a really good place in the world and you've got lots of options to expand and you've got lots of resources to work with so you've got lots of opportunities to expand i'm going to give that one an ace here once again i love death or dishonor it's such a good focus the expansion pack cosmic says mexico the amount of history baked in with here is really interesting and this is like a focus tree that doesn't work like any of the, any of the others as well 
it's kind of like all baked in within itself. Like for instance, you've got the uh, gold shirts and red shirts, which is the fascists and commies, and then it kind of merges into the Spanish Civil War. Then it branches out again. Then you've got the option to conquer most of uh, South America as well. Listen, this is a war game. Give me options to conquer early on. It's really fun. Then you've got the options for some interesting stuff going on with the democratic path. Then you've got another option to go on the left path here, nationalize the oil, which still leads to conquest in South America. I think for the most part, the Mexican focus tree is probably one of the best in the game. It's so unbelievably different and the mechanics are so good you have to wrestle with them. I think it's safe to say that Mexico is an S tier. The Netherlands. The Netherlands is great too because I feel like the national spirits are kind of easy to understand and you've kind of had a very similar situation to France in a way like you easily can easily collapse and you've got to fix the issues of the past which I think is a really cool focus path. And you've got some really cool stuff too like expanding your nation by Gesundheit works. Everyone's favorite focus path. Plus, you've got some other cool stuff as well, like when you... Where's my cam just gone down? I think the coolest thing to do is this old gateway to Europe mechanic as well, which gives you some really cool options to go for a monarchist path, as well as to restore the Kaiser and make the Germans your puppet nation as well. The other ones is really good. Really, really good. I'm going to finish this sandwich, guys. I'm so hungry. So Switzerland, uh, bad, 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 bad. It's the same issue uh, that Turkey has. It's kind of really railroaded. Specific ideologies going through national focuses. Uh, the fact that you can't change your divisions early on, you are in a big, really bad geographical situation to begin with too. God damn it, I hate Switzerland. <laughs> I think it's the worst one of the lot. I was so excited for this because I wanted to know more about Switzerland and the war, but for the most part, uh, the Swiss in the game are just rubbish. I really don't like that path at all. Oh, uh, next up is Spain. Pain, pain, pain. N another really linear focus path, which kind of makes sense in a way. You've got to deal with the Spanish Civil War. It is what it is, I guess. And you've got lots, lots of focuses. But then when you narrow down the path, you got this path. Then you go down this path. You select it to about 20 focuses, which I suppose in a way feels good. But the just truth is, is you, you're going, going down a set linear path and you don't have a great deal a lot of choice it's okay for the most part you can do some really cool things down some of the alternative ideologies and because you've got so many choices you can't diss that can you it's really good but for the most part i'm not just a big fan of it because it's just so unbelievable in here uh, next up is portugal portugal is pretty decent too lapping mechanic with the whole world hates you and you've got to basically go to war with everyone which is really cool and different and also the brazilian kingdom unified path which allows you to unify uh with brazil which is really cool because you get the ability to take a chunk out of south america and a content that's been massively for the most part ignored and you've also got some cool options to work with the colonies in africa either gaining compliance or gaining cause unfortunately you do start off kind of weak and it's kind of hard to catch up to the rest of the world to actually have a massively impact but i suppose once again that's kind of a historical thing so you can't really complain about that for the most part portugal is pretty damn good hungary listen you can't talk about hungary without talking about the austro-hungarian path can you and it is pretty cool it's, it's sad that unfortunately the the democratic king path is very boring and also elect a fascist king is just technically the the other fascist path and supposed to the most part the industry path is kind of generic it's it's an okay one i think for the most part the austria hungary path kind of makes it the most interesting it is kind of mediocre slightly sub tier i like some of the elements of the austria hungary path but i hate the rng so it's just unfortunately pretty low d tier for me next up romania romania is pretty cool because uh You've got the Balkan Dominus. You could declare war early. The ability to declare war early is always fun in Hoi 4. It's a war game. And you can do it as non-aligned as well as democratic, which is also really, really fun too. <clears throat> For the most part, though, it is kind of a similar focus path. If you go down preserve the greater Romania, the path is kind of boring for the most part. It is okay. I love it for the most part because of the declare war elements early game. But the most part is fairly average, giving it a C tier. You've got the Baltic focus trees. I'm going to put them all into one focus. Uh... Lithuania is probably the best with the Polish Lithuanian Empire. And you've got the kind of funny things with the alt history with Estonia forming like a uh, an Arctic Empire as such. So for the most part, the Baltic focus trees are actually pretty damn good. They're the best ones uh, included when it came down to the focuses they added in No Step Back. Next up, British Raj, another one that's recently gone through an update. It's the same as Canada, really. It's pretty railroaded. You don't get a lot of choices. And you're forced into a civil war if you go down a different alternative history path. It's kind of cool that they've given us the option now to do the administrative oversight to allow us to get rid of the agrarian society. It's really difficult to do, but it is really rewarding. So it's just kind of okay, I guess. For the most part, as a really powerful nation like the Raj, you've got lots of opportunities. But it does feel like the focus tree does massively limit your ability to expand. I guess for the most part, it is just okay. I guess of all the together for victory focus trees, it's probably one of the better ones. And being the fact that it's recently been improved too, is also pretty 
Sweet. Next up is the Chinese Warlords. They've all pretty much got the same focus tree, all the Warlords. It's basically a spin on the generic focus tree path. Uh, with the option to later becoming the main Chinese focus tree. It's not a lot to say about it, to be honest with you. I like the fact that you can do cross-border raids, border conflicts. That's kind of cool. Most of the bonuses don't really lead that very far. There's not a great deal to say about it, unfortunately. It, it is it is pretty low. To be fair, there's even an argument to be said that it is actually worse than the generic focus trees. But I suppose you've got to take into account it can become the main Chinese focus tree. Yeah, I think we have to take that into account. That's a big factor. It's a small focus tree that can later become a larger focus tree. Next one is the People's Republic of China. It's practically China again, which I didn't really think much think much of. But now you've got three different alternative uh, paths. I like some of the bonuses on here, but unfortunately you're locked behind the really poopy, crappy, big part of the Chinese focus tree, which I've never been a big fan of, to be fair. It's a little bit better than the normal Chinese focus tree. Just a little bit better. Just because I feel like it takes away some of that complexity and just makes it a little bit more simplistic what different ideologies you can go for. Manchuko, which is another Chinese focus tree alternative path with the spicy ability to go down assertiveness and allow you to form the Qing Empire, which is very, 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 very old history. Super old history, mega old history. It's basically the same thing as the Warlords, really. Warlords part two. Australia! I'll admit, out of all the Together for Victory nations, this is the one I played the least. You've got a decent economy, but your strongest element, your economy, is restricted behind Great Depression. So being able to convert from a minor power to a major power is actually quite difficult. I feel it hard to rank this one because I, once again, I've not really played around with it enough. One thing I will say is I've tried to do the New Zealand puppet one, the bottom right here. You can't see it, it's so small. It basically allows you to unify all the Australia colonial nations and unify them. And most of the time, you know me, I don't want, most of the time I do play on historical. Is it slightly better than Canada? I guess so. By the smallest increment. Oh, no, no, down here. New Zealand is practically more of the same. Together for Victory is pretty much the same. It's frustrating too that if you want to work with the Maori, which is a cool little bit of flavor event, there's also penalties associated with that. You're already a small nation as it is. Don't give me more penalties. I want to be able to fix my nation and make it even better. But I either take consumer goods or I lose stability, which is just really painful for such a small nation as New Zealand. Once again, it's one of those bouncing mechanic things. For the most part, Balancing should always be taken into account when it comes down to making these alternative nation paths. I guess next one is this one, the Sultanate of Asar. If you want flavor, if you want spiciness, if you want lots of bonuses for militia, this is the focus path you go for. I love the flag too. Look at that flag. Look at that flag. Isn't that amazing? Red. Eh, it's basically a generic focus tree and it's just a little bit better because it's got a little bit of, of that spiciness that you get and getting really OP militia. You're in a very compromised situation to begin with. Oh, last but not least, South Africa. I think there's a lot of flavor with South Africa because of its political situation and how it's kind of the most distant member of the Commonwealth. However, I don't feel like the game takes advantage of it that much. And once again, it's one of those kind of like you start as a weak nation and you don't get really many opportunities to become any stronger than you already are. Like 55% reduction in recruitable population. That's more than what China has. And of course, China's got its massive pop. It's one of those nations that basically everything's going wrong and the focus tree does nothing to help you until super late game. It's kind of cool, a eh, historically, like causing the Portuguese states to rebel and then, for instance, joining a little mini communist union in South Africa. But for the most part, it's another one of those beat a guy when he's down, don't really give you any bonuses. South Africa needs some love and this nation needs to be buffed really heavily. I think for the most part, it is probably one of the worst ones in Together for Victory. And the last, but definitely least, focus tree is Nepal. Yep, it's a generic focus tree. I'm going to rate the generic focus tree. Why not? And it will be classed as the Nepal flag. Why not? It, it, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. To be fair, the Czechoslovakian focus tree is the generic focus tree with like a little bit of extra flavor and a little bit extra factories. So to give it justice, this should be here which is the generic focus tree. It feels a bit like a disservice to give Turkey the same place as a generic focus tree. So are we going to move Turkey up one? Just one. Just, just for the sake of the Ottoman path, because the Ottoman path is quite spicy. But for the most part, I have a massive disdain for the Turkish focus tree. I'm not a big fan of it. There we go. That is the complete tier list. Did you agree with that? Did you disagree with that? Please comment below and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to select this video. This is the next one you should go for. This is part two. Go, 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 go.